Hello everyone, back to you in days a uh, fur video. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's uh fur video. So day 10 will take us to the 23rd of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have extended GFS and ECM ensembles for a couple of weeks. And we're gonna have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will take us, of course, well into April. I should get on that for you very shortly, just to say that uh the first video release today was the ECMW 42-day forecast. I was looking at the next six weeks with the uh, extended ECM model. And also, we release uh, weekend forecasts. Of course, as always, on a Saturday, we had your weekend look at. So check out the two videos if you have not yet done so. I'll tell you what's happening uh, on the channel tomorrow at the end of uh, this video. Uh, right, so I thought I'd bring you an update with subscribers. We've put on quite a few subscribers yesterday. Let's have a look at the uh, live subscriber count, which is the Social uh, Blade Google Chrome plugin. There it goes. So subscribers are currently standing at 10,756. We put on around eight subscribers uh, yesterday, I think. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, moving. We moved a bit yesterday uh, with the subs. If you would um, like to subscribe to our channel, you have not yet done so then please give us a sub tell your friends family everybody else who subscribe as well we are trying to get ourselves to 11,000 subscribers ultimately yesterday's target was like 10,750 which we we got well past uh yesterday um but i suppose uh, today's target needs to be something like uh maybe 7,770 would be a pretty good target i think for today so so i don't know if we do that or not but but anyway if you haven't yet subbed to our channel please can you give us a sub tell friends and everybody to subscribe as well thank you so much for doing that smash the like button and uh, we're gonna get ourselves to 11,000 subscribers as soon as we possibly can thank you so much everybody for all of the ongoing and continuous support you really are absolutely amazing to me and to galsworth as well thank you to each and every one of you right so uh let's begin a video looking at central temperature so ct is currently standing at 5.1 which is a normally a bang on average for this point of year. It's provisional to the 12th. So uh, for the 12th of March, uh, that is exactly uh, average, 5.1 to the 12th of March. Against 61 to 90, 90, of course, it's probably a bit colder than average, set against 81 uh, to 2010. I don't think that's going to deviate too much uh, from there. Temperatures are going to stay pretty suppressed over the next few days. Might get a bit milder through the middle part of next week, but could be offset by some chilly nights. And then later next week, we might pull in some cold air from the east. And how much cold air we pull in from the east is actually quite a certain. More about that in a moment. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to Birmingham today. Red lines are 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. So it turns the upper air temperatures, they do stay pretty suppressed really over the next uh, couple of weeks. Dates on the bottom of the uh, graph as you're looking at it of course. So generally below average with those temperatures in uh, the next week or so. Uh, and there is quite a drop in the temperature actually taking place at the end of week into next weekend. Now, as I said, there is uncertainty about how cold it's getting at the end of the week. Some GFS ensemble members uh, attain temperatures below minus 10 at 850 HPA. They're outliers, but they are there. Um, more generally, uh, most of the GFS ensemble members are sort of between minus 5 and minus 10. But today's uh, GM and ECMWF operation runs are bringing in minus 10. So it's ice cream. We'll have a look at it in a moment, but they both look really quite cold, uh, you know, for, for the time of year anyway, um, at the end of next week. The GFS a little bit less so. As we go into the last week of March, this period just here, this extended range possibly signs a little bit of a uh, warm-up then, but only, uh, the answer I mean, it's only going back close to average. The uh, thick green line here is the GFS uh, 6 set operation. When you see it in a moment, that does produce spring through the first week of March. More about that in a minute. Precipitation wise, we've got showers coming up over the next uh, few days. It's going to take a while to, to dry things out. By uh, next weekend into the following week, it is going a little bit drier. Maybe size it's going to unsettle again as we go into the last week of March. Temperature anomaly from the 13th to the 21st of March. It's going to be a little bit cold on average for England and Wales, near north of Scotland and for Northern Ireland. Quite a cold scene, really, across most parts of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 13th to 21st of March are going to be drier than average in uh, most parts of the, uh, of the UK and Ireland as well. 
The latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows that we still have quite a strong westerly uh, in with us today. West to north, westerly winds. And uh, yeah, so windy, blustery, showery and uh, pretty cool as well. This is how the UK Met is looking for Tuesday. Ridge of high pressure begin to build up from the southwest on Tuesday, starting to turn us drier, but will still be quite chilly with winds in from northwest. There's a trough coming through as well that probably produces quite a cloud of maize and patchy rain on Tuesday. By Wednesday, the high pressure will be out to the west of the country. Winds coming around the around the eastern side of that ridge from the northerly direction means that east areas will be quite chilly. But out in the west end of a ridge, it should be quite pleasant. Probably seeing temperatures into teens south, as I would have thought, uh, for parts of western Scotland and probably Northern Ireland. Uh, Thursday, the high pressure drifts a little bit further northwest, which allows a bit more of an east northeasterly to come into the southeast. That could start to drag some colder air into the southeast on Thursday, maybe with, with a few wintry showers. But quickly, that gets cut off with the UK Met, and uh, and we get rid of that easy. That goes down into France. Uh, and, and so winds just become light. It's probably still quite chilly, at least by night anyway, uh, with this. But, but reasonably pleasant by day, especially further northwards and westwards. Other models do not agree, though. This is how a GFS is looking uh, for Tuesday. Again, the ridge is building out to our west. We bring the trough through the country, producing a lot of cloud and maybe little bits and pieces of rain. Uh, by Wednesday and into Thursday, high pressure just pulls to the northwest a little bit, starts to allow something a bit colder to come in from the east or from the northeast of the GFS 6 Z. We do get an easy wind there as we go through into Friday down uh, across the south, although it is not a particularly cold one. We bring the minus 5 Celsius ice firm uh, in across England and Wales. Probably enough for showers to turn wintry in the southeast. Um, but, but not overly cold. Up in the northwest actually looks quite pleasant under, under the ridge of high pressure. And then very quickly, the GFS uh, 6A cuts off that east as we go into next weekend. Mainly dry again and temperatures beginning to uh, lift up. Almost pulling in a very cold northerly there by uh, 21st of March. But most of that northerly is going down into Scandinavia. We just remain relatively settled close to the ridge of high pressure. Still quite chilly, I have to say. Winds remaining in from the north on the cool side of the ridge of high pressure. Um, but it's going to extend range beyond day 10 with a GFS 6 there. The higher benching moves over to our south and east. We start to draw up more of a southerly type wind. So it does start to get quite a lot milder. As we go through the last uh, week of March, actually temperatures begin to get quite warm. I would have thought this looks very pleasantly spring-like here, for example, on the 29th of March. As far as we go with the GFS 6 Z today, I think that will be lifting temperatures into a mid to possibly even upper teens Celsius for more southern and eastern parts of the country. Proper taste of spring in the last week of March if the GFS 6 Z comes off. Uh, but we know from the ensemble, by the way, though, that that is a bit of an outlier. It's not, it's not exactly an outlier to start of uh, ensemble members doing that, but it's like, it does like become uh, the warmest ensemble member, really, uh, in, in that particular range. So it's not all that well supported, but we might see a warming trend uh, and like spring like conditions as we go into the last week of March. Uh, right, this LBG GM is looking so high pressure again, uh, building out to our west on Tuesday, um, bringing a lot of dry weather. The high pressure goes further north and west through Thursday and into Friday. So, so the high pressure is further north and this starts to allow more of an easterly in uh, with the GM. So the GM does pull in some really quite cold air from the east at the end of the week. This is Friday, minus five Celsius ice firm is almost through the whole country uh, by midnight on Friday. And the easterly continues as we go through into Saturday, especially across England and Wales. And by then, we are bringing in a minus 10 cells ice firm. That's probably enough to bring snow showers into eastern parts of the country by the time we get through to the end of uh, the week and next weekend. Still with that easterly, as we continue on through Saturday across many southern and eastern parts of England and Wales, a minus 10 cells ice firm is right the way through England and Wales as well. Definitely enough to bring snow showers to southern and southeastern parts of the country if that comes off. And then the high pressure just sort of slips south as we go later on into uh, next weekend, but still looking cold, still with that minus 10 uh, ice firm through uh, England and Wales. Eventually that high pressure does slip south as we turn it mainly dry and we start to cut off the, the worst of that easterly. So it begins to get a bit milder by day 10, a little bit less cold by day 10, but still under high pressure. And the ECM looks like this. 
So again, the ridge is building out to our west and southwest uh, on Tuesday. High pressure over to west of the country on Wednesday. Again, winds in from more of a northerly direction. Then the high pressure goes further north once again on Thursday. Depends how far north we take this high pressure, how far north we take this ridge, as to how much of an easterly we get. The GM and the ECM are taking this high pressure further north at the end of week, which does allow more of an easterly wind, at least in across England, and Wales. So again, these are the upper air temperatures for Friday. See, uh, the whole of the country, virtually anyway, is with the minus 5 Celsius isotherm. As we get through into Saturday, as that easy wind continues, especially across southern southeastern parts of the country, the minus 10 Celsius isotherm has pushed through across many parts of England and Wales. So how far we take that north uh, will we'll, uh, determine how much of an easy we get. How much of an easy we get will determine how far in we bring this minus 10 Celsius isotherm, how cold uh, the air gets. But definitely the GM and the ECM are cold enough to bring snow showers into southern, southeastern and eastern parts of the country at the end of next week. Remember, UK Met and the GFS say no to that idea. Eventually, we get rid of our easy wind. That gets uh, pushed off down France. We find a ridge slipping southwards with the ECM. So we cut off the easterly. Temperatures will start to recover. Still chilly, but temperatures will start to recover. The snow risk will go. And that's how it as we get today. 10, not too bad. Uh, a ridge of high pressure then sitting over just right away. It's still more or less on the cold side of this ridge, I have to say. So it's not going to be a heat wave, but it will certainly be less cold and, uh, and a lot of dry and fine weather. This is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run. So, of course, at the moment, we're talking about showers and longer spells of rain with risk of hill snow in the north. As we get through into uh, the middle of the week, things will turn drier. And then at the end of the week, in come those east winds, bring wintry showers into the east on uh, Thursday. And then light snow showers into east and southeastern England as we get through to the end of next week. So it does, yes, there is a chance of snow in the southeast, can you believe that? Uh, well, actually you can't because it's more likely to snow at Easter than it is at Christmas. So not all that uncommon at all to get snow uh, at this time of the year. And that's what it's showing anyway. Uh, snow showers coming in from the east with that minus 10 Celsius ice firm at the end of next week. Uh, they eventually sort of fade away as that ridge of high pressure builds down across the country, turning it mainly dry and temperatures start to stage uh, a recovery. Uh, these are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10. Actually, let's have a very quick look, shall we, at uh, this easterly in, in a week's time. So these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for uh, one week's time, uh, which is going to get us to, uh, this will get us to the 20th of uh, March. So, have 20 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure, more or less over country, just a little bit to our north, and something of an easterly, more or less passing to our south, but very, very close. 19 have the high pressure fur noise. See how the difference of the high pressure and the high pressure makes a difference. This option has the high pressure further north, and we bring in that easterly across England and Wales. It does include the control and the operational run. So both the control and the operational are bringing in that cold easterly this time next week. And 12 have the high pressure again to our north northwest. A little bit closer with the low pressure our southeast. Again, I think this is quite a cold option probably bringing in a win from like a, an east or north east direction, quite a tight gradient uh, as well. So, my charge is probably to bring some quite cold air in from the east, actually, uh, as, as we get through to the end of uh, next week and the beginning of next weekend. Right, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 23rd of March. I have 26 members of the ECM on summers, including the control and the operation run with high pressure right over top of the country, mainly dry, with that low pressures up to the north. 16 uh, with high pressure just out to our west. Again, going to be a lot of dry weather with that. A nine with high pressure to our west, low pressure is to our east, and probably bringing in like a northwesterly type uh, wind. So that's going to be like the coolest and most unsettled option. Looks like we're shifting towards higher pressure as we get through to like day 10, a little bit drier and milder. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This goes to the 28th of March. 19 members of the ECL ensembles have low pressure right over top of the country. Going to be very unsettled and potentially quite cool with that. 16 will have high pressure 
pressure over and just to the east of the coach. That's probably spring right, probably in line with what the uh, GFS 6Z extended operation run is doing. So I think that could be a taste of spring uh, with that one. And then 16, again, not a settled weather, but the high pressure just slightly two hour west, which means we're a little bit cooler bringing the wind in through the north around that ridge of high pressure. So, so yeah, you know, uh, we could be cool and wet. We could be spring like and dry, or we could be somewhere in between. In between. So a lot of uncertainty uh, at two weeks out. Uh, lastly, CFS V2 means the 500 millibar heights break it down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 13th to the 19th of March. The coming week, we'll have low pressure to our east combined with high pressure out to our west and northwest. And we're probably going to bring in quite a cold uh, east northeasterly flow, particularly at the end of uh, the week. Into uh, week two, which is going to take us from the 20th to 26th of March. High pressure then will be right in over top of the country, mainly dry and maybe a bit of a taste of spring in the air. Week three is going to take us uh, from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April, running up towards Easter or getting towards Easter anyway. High pressure dominating weather, so it should be mainly dry. We might be starting to pull in something a bit colder from the east northeast again uh, with that, but should be mostly dry and, and not too bad anyway. And then this looks quite good for week four. If you want warm weather, this is the 3rd to the 9th of April. High pressure over Scandinavia, but it's reaching down like through Germany and into central med. Low pressure is out towards Greenland and Iceland. And so in between, we're drawing up a southerly or southwesterly wind. So that would really boost the temperature there. Uh, and uh, um, definitely a taste of spring, if not sort of early summer type of weather. Maybe enough to get the temperature um, you know, into the upper teens or the low 20s Celsius if it came off would be quite remarkable to do that after a generally chilly feel. But you never know with the weather. The weather will always look for ways to surprise us. So, so yeah, uh, you know, 3rd to the 9th of April, CFS is uh, looking a lot drier and warmer too. We shall see, time will tell. If you've enjoyed this video, please can you smash your like button. Make sure, not literally, don't damage your device, but please smash your like button. Um, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We are trying to grind our way to 17,000 subscribers. No, we're not what I'm talking about. We're trying to grind our way to 11,000 subscribers. Get ahead of myself. 17K will be in a couple of years' time. No, we're trying to grind ourselves to 11K subscribers. So thank you so much, everybody. I don't at the clock, it's, uh, you know, 17 minutes, uh, the recording. Um, so, so, uh, we're trying to get to 11k. Please give us a sub, uh, and uh, and tell your friends and family, everybody else, subscribe as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment, let us know what you think. Right, tomorrow, we're going to start off with the uh, second summer update, looking at uh, February, uh, to summer data for that one, following on from last week's summer, um, winter to summer date. So, February to summer, uh, data tomorrow for the first summer update, second summer update, I should say. And uh, this isn't going terribly well, is it, this last few uh, minutes or so. And then the, the uh, second video is going to be Gaz over sending around, of course, and we live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock. going to be a Patal Peng special in our live stream. We'll show you long-range data from Patal Peng for summer um, 2021. And shall we have a little look at winter 21-22 with Patal Peng's analogues? What do you think about that, everyone? Let me know if you want to see that in the live stream tomorrow. Uh, right, though. Uh, right then, but uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for the live stream. Bye for now.